If you're watching impeachment in America, you've learned the name Congresswoman Debbie Lesko because of your role in all of this, Judiciary Committee, but you have really um, been passionate about this issue of impeachment, haven't you? Oh, I sure have, because it's totally unfair. It's a totally unfair process against the President of the United States. And, you know, I just can't let that stand. I need to let the American public know what is going on behind the scenes uh, so they, they, they realize that what the President is saying is that this is a witch hunt to take him out is absolutely true. For some people that saw you in public service for a long time that didn't know you very well, didn't see this fighter side of you, but you have been one of the most outspoken critics of Jerry Nadler and the process. When you read the words of, of Chairman Nadler and, and his three-point um, test, yeah. that was an amazing moment, I think, for a lot of people. Well, yeah, basically what it is, is I'm a member of the Judiciary Committee, and once the articles of impeachment got to the Judiciary Committee, I used Chairman De Jerry Nadler's own words against him. I, it was from last November. He basically said there was a three-pronged test if they were going to move forward with impeachment. And he didn't meet any of the three prongs. And so I just read back his words. He didn't like it at all. In fact, when he went out on a press conference right after that hearing, he brought that up right away. He goes, oh, I passed the three-pronged test. Oh, no, he did not. If you even go back a little further in the Intelligence Committee, which is very strange that mm -hmm. articles of impeachment or investigation yes. was even in that committee, but to do it in a secret room they call the SCIF, you tried to get in that room, and as a member of the Judiciary Committee, you could not get in, couldn't you? Yeah, you are exactly right, Mike, and this is why it has been so unfair, just one of the reasons. So typically in the past, impeachments have gone through the Judiciary Committee. The whole thing has gone through the Judiciary Committee, and the President and his counsel is able to be at the Judiciary Committee and cross-examine witnesses, ask questions, listen to the testimony of the witnesses. That was not the case. The House Democrats passed a rule that basically put all of the witnesses in Intelligence Committee under Adam Schiff. They did it in a skiff, which is usually a small room that's designed for classified briefings. Like I'm on Homeland Security Committee, and we have classified briefings on threats to America in these rooms. They're not big rooms. They're not designed for hearings with a whole bunch of people. And so even if all of the members of Congress that were allowed to go in there would have gone in, there wouldn't have been enough room for seating. And so this was a very biased process. I wasn't able to hear the witnesses. I wasn't able to ask questions of the witnesses. Yet I'm in Judiciary Committee where I have to vote on the articles of impeachment. And really unfair to the President of the United States because he was not able to ask any questions of witnesses until it hit Judiciary Committee. But by then it was way too late because all the witnesses were in the other committee, right? Well, in the secret room. And they did an informal inquiry where there were no rules, and then mm -hmm. they made up the rules for the formal inquiry, and then they finally got it over to your committee. Then it was voted on, yeah. party lines, mm -hmm. and then Nancy Pelosi sat on them. Oh, yeah, R totally ridiculous. I mean, you should have heard for hours and hours and hours how my Democratic colleagues on Judiciary Committee and others said, they had to do this. It was an emergency situation, national security risk, that we had to impeach him now before Christmas. And then Nancy Pelosi sits on it for 33 days. It kind of undercuts their little emergency national security risk story, doesn't it? Do you have a... Uh do you have any idea why she sat on those for so long? Was it Why prolong this and do this for over a month? I have no idea what is in Nancy Pelosi's mind. Now, she's a politically astute person, or she wouldn't be where she is. Uh, so there had to be a reason. And maybe it is what some people speculate, that she was trying to make sure that the Democratic senators that are running for president uh, don't get out there and be, get to be in the Iowa caucuses and stuff, and so that would give an edge to Joe Biden. Maybe she wants Joe Biden in. And it's so funny that in the everybody in America would say, I would say most people would say, I'm an American before I'm anything politically. If the president had done something wrong, the American people have a right to know. But you can't remove a president from office just because you hate him either. Yeah, no, you're right. The Democrats did not identify any crime or impeachable offense that the president committed. 
I mean, they have said over and over how much they don't like his tweets, they don't like this, they don't like the call, they don't think it was right, they don't think that he should be doing foreign policy, even though he's the president of the United States, and how dare he even question any of these career uh, foreign policy people. I mean, he's the president of the United States. And so they are, the Democrats are setting a very dangerous precedent here, because they have no crime that he committed. There's no statutory crime that they have identified that he has committed, and they say, well, we don't need a crime. Well, technically, that's true. It doesn't say in the Constitution, you know, technically you need a statutory crime. What it says is you need treason, uh, bribery, or high crimes and misdemeanors. So it's up to the House, whatever votes they can get, to define what they think is a high crime and misdemeanor. Apparently, they think this call between President Trump and the Ukrainian president classified as a crime or misdemeanor, which is absolutely untrue. They have not proved their case. And that's evident because once it got to the Senate, then they all cried, oh, we need more witnesses. Well, why didn't you call the witnesses in the House well, instead of rushing to. through? Yeah, exactly. This is so bogus, so hypocritical by some of my Democrat colleagues. It's really even hard to watch. I have to put on the mute button. Well, this is why Congresswoman Lesko has been asked to be a part of something. In the next segment, you're going to see why this passionate person has been asked to do that. So don't go away. We're back with Congresswoman Lesko, and so you were asked by the Trump team to be a part of their team on impeachment, correct? Yeah, how surreal is that? I mean, I didn't even know that I was going to be running for Congress, and I was in the state Senate. I love the job, and then all of a sudden I get elected to Congress, and I love the job there too. But then to have President Trump in the White House asked me to be one of eight people from the U.S. House of Representatives to represent him on their impeachment defense team. It's really surreal. I, sometimes I have to pinch myself, Mike, just to go, how did this happen to me? It's, it's wonderful. It's a blessing and it's an honor. But anybody that knows you understands why he would ask. And anybody that's seen you and how you just were in this last segment and what you've done in the committee, you're well informed, you're passionate about the topic, you are an obvious choice to so many people. They have impeachment managers. So the yeah. Democrats named their impeachment managers, Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, and the list of them. You had an interesting um, uh, fact about some right. of those managers. Yeah. They, you know what's really one of the reasons I know this whole thing is bogus and political is because six out of the seven Democrat impeachment managers already voted to further impeachment, articles of impeachment, before the phone call between President Trump and the Ukrainian president. And you know what that impeachment, that offense that they thought they should impeach the president on? It was because President Trump criticized the squad. Give me a break. Yeah. Th this is now impeachable. They've done other articles of impeachment in the past, in 2017 and 2018. One was because President Trump criticized the NFL player Kaepernick, who kneeled during the Pledge of Allegiance. And the other one was because he called the country a shithole. I mean, now, would I call a country a shithole? I might use other words, but it's certainly not impeachable. So I'm totally convinced that these Democrats will do anything, say anything, to get rid of the president and to influence the 2020 election. So what will your role be moving forward in the process? Well, I'm going to continue communicating what I believe, and that it, the president is doing a great job. The Democrats have not found any impeachable offenses. In fact, they admit they don't even have a crime that they have identified that the president has committed, but they said, well, we don't need a crime. Well, okay, let's impeach him on chewing bubble gum then, okay? If they have the votes, I guess they'll go ahead and do it. So then what will be, what do you believe the American people are going to learn through this process? Well, I hope the American people will see this for what it is, that the Democrats will do anything, in my opinion, and say anything to get back in power. 
I mean, they are tasting the power. When they got the majority in the House of Representatives, and they started in January, and people even said before January, they said, oh, we're going to impeach this president. In fact, we had one of the Democrat squad members say uh, profanity, saying, we're going to MF and yeah. impeach this oh, yeah. this She you was know, selling t-shirts. Yeah, it, it is unbelievable. It, there's a lot of Democrats. And when those senators, you know, signed that oath saying, oh, I'm going to be so, you know, not biased and that type of thing, whatever it said, I was just laughing because a lot of those Democrat senators already said they want to impeach him. They've been on public TV saying they want to impeach him, but they're going to sign an oath saying they're not going to be biased. I mean, is anybody buying this? Well, I how don't about know. the Democrats that are running for president that would be running against this president? How could they possibly be unbiased? I know. It, you know, it's, it's really kind of sad because this really weakens our democracy. Impeachment is supposed to be there when there's a crime that's committed by a president, when it's so atrocious that, you know, something has to be done. In the past, it's been bipartisan. Both Democrats and Republicans uh, work together. They voted on, you know, impeachment. This has not been the case. It's been totally partisan. Not one Republican in the House of Representatives, not one single one, not even the moderate ones, voted to impeach the president. This is so partisan. It's People need to see it for what it is. It's a total political ploy. They, want, they don't want the president in there. They don't like the president. They want to keep the House of Representatives. They want to take over the Senate. They want to take over the presidency. I mean, the Democrats sit there and say, oh, President Trump is cheating in the election. He's cheating. They're the ones cheating. They're influencing the election with this whole impeachment crap. I got to tell you, I'm so glad that the nation is getting to see what so many of us in Arizona have seen in your public service for so long. I'm glad to see that you are getting the attention. That, and I know you're not doing it for that. But I'm glad that people are seeing you for who you are. We appreciate your work. The people of your district and Arizona are very lucky to have you. And thanks for coming on the show and sharing this. And we wish you well. And we can't wait to see how this turns out. Thank you, Mike. You're great. I mean, I remember you from way back when. And you're just fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll be back here in a minute.